The heart of a man is darkness, depravity, destruction. Have you ever wanted more from your true crime podcasts? Have you ever wanted to feel the line approaching, then be helplessly pulled across it? Prepare yourself for the most extreme podcast you'll ever hear. Monstro, the new offering from the minds behind Sword and Scale, Dark Topic, and the West Side Fairy Tales, is an audio horror true crime experience unlike anything you've ever heard. Travel through time and across the globe to slip on the shoes of the most inhumane killers and absorb the details of their unspeakable acts. Envision their crimes more vividly than ever before. Let it surround you. Feel the terror, the fear, the sickness. Monstro is available at monstropodcast.com, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen. Simply search Monstro, M-O-N-S-T-R-U-O. To subscribe today and while you're searching, here's a preview of Monstro. He wipes his shoes before entering the farmhouse. His mother always required he wipe his feet. As a child, she would get very cross with him if he forgot. He cringes, remembering her shrill shriek echoing through the old farmhouse. She was very controlling after his father left. He was the man of the house, and because of that, he was a dutiful son. They would spend hours decorating each of the 36 rooms in the farmhouse with a different theme. With no father, no husband, and no siblings, all they had was each other. Now he had nothing. Nothing but the quiet isolation of his farmhouse. Armin began to prepare dinner as he thought more about that childhood memory that would shape the rest of his life. The meat, a choice cut, strikes the pan and erupts into white noise. The memory reminds him of how much he longs for a friend, for a companion. His mother suffered a heart attack and died just two years ago, while he was at work. He removes the cut of meat from the pan and sets it to rest. After his mother's death, he was left with a sense of relief, actually. He was out from under her thumb now, but lonelier than ever. No longer bound by the restricting love of his mother, there is nothing holding him back anymore. He has spent the last two years immersing himself in his subversive fantasy. He knows it's wrong, but it takes away some of the pain, some of the loneliness. There is the man that people know, and the man he hides, the man he wants to be, always looking for someone to fill the void. He turns to the internet, this new invention that makes it possible for a lonely man living in a farmhouse to reach out through the ether. His eyes are still dry from the cold night air. He blinks, and as he does so, a memory of his father's face flashes before him, like a Rorschach test the result of having stared at a light too long and then closing your eyes. The blurry imprint burned into his retinas. His fantasy is wrong, he knows it. But what is the harm if it's just a fantasy? I was a young boy when my father left and after I never felt more alone. I hated the solitude. To cope, I retreated into my imagination. Only there could I do whatever I wanted. My imaginary brother Frankie and I would play Robinson Crusoe, my favorite book. It was this book and its cannibal islanders that taught me how to truly never be alone. I was only eight when I had my first thoughts of eating a boy. I saw a classmate's exposed thigh and was struck by its delectability. 
When I reached puberty, sex pervaded all of my fantasies, and Brother Frankie morphed into a lustful figure. I grew out of such childish things as imaginary friends, but my adolescent urges soon combined with my childhood obsession. I yearned to taste, to eat another boy, so he would always be with me. It couldn't be just any boy. It had to be one I was attracted to, sexually. My tastes were not too discerning. Lean, yet supple would suffice. Oh, and willing, of course. After mother's death, I was alone again, but with a weight lifted off my shoulders. This time, being alone allowed me to seek out permanent companionship. Online, I discovered thousands like me. Thousands that celebrated the idea of being eaten, or eating another. Finally, I began to feel like myself, and not so alone, after all. Armin sets the table with his nicest dinnerware, but only for one. The candle pops as he lights the wick. It casts a flickering yellow light. The remnants of light scatter across the ceiling with the darkness seemingly rising up to swallow the room. The shadow creeps slowly as he sits down to dinner. The aroma of his meal meets his nose with a warm thickness. His mouth waters. He places his napkin on his lap softly and opens the wine. A South African red, vintage 96. The cork releases a loud pop and Armin pours a glass. The crimson liquid fills the glass as the gleam of red-orange light begins to fade from the ceiling. Armin carves his meat and places it in his mouth. He lets it sit on his tongue for a moment before chewing, savoring its juices. His eyes close and his mind focuses on the taste and the texture. He wonders what it would be like to eat a man. A smile grows on his face, parting his lips just enough to take another sip of wine. He will know soon enough. What you've just heard is a preview of Monstro. If you'd like to hear the rest of the episode, please subscribe to Monstro on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts, or find a link in the episode notes. That's M-O-N-S-T-R-U-O. Monstro on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening to this. Thank you.